Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. My heart breaks for every one of their souls, and I just, I can't get it off my mind. A holiday weekend tragedy. At least two dozen people dead after a dive boat goes up in flames. The latest on the frantic search for survivors and the harrowing rescue from Good Samaritans. A Central Valley couple was in a cove nearby when the fire broke out. Hear them talk about their daring rescue and what crew members told them as they climbed aboard to safety. Tracking deadly Hurricane Dorian now parked over the Bahamas. Thousands of homes destroyed so far and people along the East Coast being warned to get ready and evacuate. This is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. Good morning. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher and uh, another hot day yesterday. Yeah, it was pretty warm out there. Let's check in with Kevin with the look at your Tuesday forecast. And it's going to be another hot one today with temperatures near 100 before we see any type of a cool down. As we take a look at the uh, satellite and radar right now, not a lot happening. A few clouds but, uh, into the uh, Kern County Mountains and a little bit being picked up on radar. I don't think that's hitting the ground, but there is the potential for an isolated thunderstorm this afternoon, even though most of that energy will remain east of us. 76 right now in Bakersfield under a calm wind as we take a look at the hour by hour uh, upper 70s to start. 91 at noon and by 3 o'clock we'll look for 98 degrees. Into the mountains we're currently at 63 under a calm wind as we take a look at the hour by hour forecast. Plenty of sunshine today and temperatures expected right near 88 by 3. We'll talk more weather in just a little bit but first let's get a check of the morning commute. We'll send that over to Alex. Alright thanks Kevin taking you outside for a look at the 99 at Airport Drive and as you can see, uh, it is back to school and back to work Tuesday after a Labor Day holiday. And uh, things are starting to pick up on that side of town. We do have one major injury crash being reported on the eastbound lanes of the 58 near the Union Avenue off-ramp. So if you are headed that way, uh, be mindful of that. Again, this happened about uh, 3.50 this morning. And uh, CHP is reporting that a trailer, a 15-foot trailer, is on its side. Uh, they are out on the Union Avenue off-ramp on the eastbound lanes of the 58. So be mindful of that as crews are on scene. Again, this happened about an hour hour and 15 minutes ago or so. Uh, so crews are could still be on scene removing that trailer uh, and uh, clearing the scene. So we'll keep you updated on that and give you any more information as soon as it becomes available. But for now, uh, here's another look at the 99 at Airport Drive. And we'll have another check coming up in about 15 minutes. The death toll rises after yesterday's deadly boat fire near the Channel Islands. The dive boat Conception somehow burst into flames yesterday morning and now sits on the ocean floor off the coast of Santa Cruz Island. 39 people were on board, taking part in a three-day diving cruise. So far, first responders rescued five people and believe they've recovered 25 bodies, though the Coast Guard says that number has to be confirmed by the coroner. This morning, nine people remain unaccounted for. A makeshift memorial is now set up at the harbor in Santa Barbara, where the Conception, uh, uh, a steady stream of people flowed there yesterday, including one man who spent most of his life on the sea. He says he didn't know anyone on the boat, but has sailed on the Conception before. And I've been in rough seas, and I've been, but to be caught in a fire is just terrifying. And uh, I did not have a chance to get above. And, uh, and I hope that the survivors, they, they're usually berthed on the top of the ship, and there was no chance for them to get down below. I know I've been on the Conception many times, and uh, a lot of people will look at it as if the, the crew didn't do anything to the people down below. There's a small care staircase that goes down below. If it's engulfed in flames, there's no way the, the crew could get down in time to help them. I know the ship. And when the Mayday call went out, the boat was fully engulfed in flames, and we're learning the passengers on board who were below deck sleeping had little chance to escape. And even though crews were out on the water overnight searching for survivors, officials say the likelihood of finding people alive is becoming slim. Panic in the Pacific. A frantic call for help. That's on the stress. This is Coast Guard Sector Los Angeles on Channel 16. What is your position and number of persons on board? Over. Three 
39 people were on board when flames took over the vessel early Monday morning. The Coast Guard and other agencies responded. This is probably the worst case scenario you could possibly have. You have a vessel that's on the open sea that is in the middle of the night, I mean at 3.30 in the morning. Um, fire is the scourge of any uh, ship. And officials say survival is looking less likely. I think we all should be prepared um, to move into um, the, the worst outcome. The conception was ending a three-day diving cruise. The boat had a bunk-style sleeping arrangement under the main deck. This diagram shows the layout of the 33 beds and only one way out. There's a small care staircase that goes down below. If it's engulfed in flames, there's no way the, the crew could get down in time to help them. I know the ship. The crew jumped to safety. Five people were evacuated aboard a Good Samaritan pleasure craft known as the Grape Escape. The end of a holiday weekend exploring the wonders of California's southern coast instead became the start of a search for those missing. Investigators plan to hold another news conference at 10 a.m. You can download our 17 News app to get the latest news alerts sent directly to your phone. And, of course, we'll have an update for you on the news at noon. This morning, we're also hearing more of the harrowing moments on board that deadly boat fire. Many people say they're shocked to hear about the fire. Even people from here in Kern County say they've been on the conception. You just heard the Mayday call, and now we're giving you a listen to the panic on board. What is the emergency over? Vessel Conception, Coast Guard Los Angeles. What is the emergency? Over. Vessel reporting a vessel on fire. Go Roger, Captain. Your vessel is on fire, is that correct? Roger, are you on board Conception? Roger, and there's 33 people on board the vessel that's on fire. They can't get off? Roger, are they locked inside the boat? Roger, can you get back on board and unlock the boat, uh, lock, unlock the doors so they can get off? Roger, you don't have any firefighting gear at all? No, no fire extinguishers or anything? Here's a picture Alex shared on his KGET Facebook page uh, from Ventura County Fire Department. It shows the aftermath of the boat before sinking. We'll show that to you coming up in a moment. And we checked to see if the company had any violations in the past. We couldn't find anything major. The company was inspected in February and last August. The Coast Guard said the boat was in compliance with safety regulations. And this morning, we're hearing from the Central Valley couple who rescued the five crew members from the conception, including the ship's captain. 17's Vanessa Dillon joins us this morning in the newsroom with the uh, with this part of the rescue. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Alex. Bob Hansen says he and his wife, Shirley, were in a cove near Santa Cruz Island around 3.30 yesterday morning. They heard something loud and heard calls for help. Hansen woke up and then he saw it, the inferno that was the conception. It had actually, it, the entire boat was engulfed. Like it was from the bow to the stern and 30 foot flames. It was, it was just terrible. It was just completely lit up. I mean, there was, there was not a place on the boat where it wasn't on fire. Hansen says the crew jumped off the conception in just their underwear, then used a dinghy line on the back of the boat to escape. They told Hansen they weren't able to save anyone else on board because the escape route was on fire. Hansen says one crew member had a broken leg and another had a sprained ankle. The three crew members who weren't hurt went back onto the dinghy to search for survivors with a flashlight, but they weren't able to find anyone alive. I feel so sad, you know, had... Had they been able to all abandon boat, I have more than enough room to put the entire crew on board, the entire guests and everything on board. They were all under, underneath and couldn't get out. According to the captain and the crew, their main exit was through the galley, and the galley was on fire. They had actually tried open the door to try to get in there and to get to them, and it was all on fire. At that time, they said ceiling tires, tiles were falling out of the top of the uh, out of the ceiling in the galley. A crew member told Hansen his girlfriend was sleeping below deck and he wasn't able to help her. Hansen also said the crew told him the boat was hosting three birthday parties, including one for a 17-year-old girl who was on board with her parents. Alex? 
An investigation is underway after shots rang out in South Bakersfield. It happened just before 9 o'clock outside of Tommy's Liquor Store on South Chester Avenue near Wilson Road. Paramedics took three people, two men and a woman to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. At least one car parked in the liquor store lot was also hit by a bullet. Bakersfield police say the gunman is described as a black man in his 20s or 30s, about 5 feet 11 inches tall with a slim build. He was last seen wearing a black beanie, gray shirt and black shorts. The Bakersfield Police Department and family of an officer who died suddenly last month will find, say their final goodbyes today. Detective Kevin Hawk first joined BPD in 1980 with the Police Explorer Post. He became full-time in 1990 and a detective in 2014. His family says he loved his job and community and wanted to start an animal rescue in Tehachapi. But he died last month of complications from valley fever. His funeral set for 10 o'clock this morning at River Lakes Community Church on Callaway Drive. When challenging the House Minority Leader, a Democrat throws her hat in the ring to run against Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy. And a holiday hike gone horribly wrong. A person is dead and at least five others were re rescued from a trail in Southern California. It all happened yesterday afternoon in the Malibu Hills. The L.A. County Sheriff's Office says it got several calls that a handful of hikers had run out of water. A rescue helicopter launched and was able to find and rescue the hikers... Deputies say it appears 10 hikers had split off and gotten separated. The hiker who died is described as a man in his 60s. Two others suffered heat exhaustion and dehydration. As the Labor Day holiday came to a close, so too did the CHP's maximum enforcement period. It started Friday and ended at midnight. We're still waiting for the final numbers to come in, but as of 10 o'clock yesterday morning, CHP officers statewide arrested nearly 1,000 people for driving under the influence. During the 2018 Labor Day weekend, 36 people died on California roads. If you suspect anyone of driving under the influence, the CHP asks you to please call 911. Firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked a house fire in northwest Bakersfield. It happened around 8.30 last night at this home on Courtney Street near Verdugo Lane and Hegeman Road. You can see extensive damage to that garage and firefighters inspecting possible damage to the home as well. No word on what sparked the fire or if anyone was inside when flames broke out. And more fallout from two deadly plane crashes involving the Boeing 737 MAX jets. When one major carrier plans to put those planes back in the skies, coming up in your 17 Business Watch. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back in your business watch. The fallout from two deadly crashes involving Boeing 737 MAX jets continues. American Airlines plans to continue to cancel flights using those planes for another month. The nation's largest airline carrier says it won't resume flights for its fleet of the MAX jets until December 3rd. American had anticipated reintroducing the grounded planes to its flight schedule in early November. The jets were grounded in March after deadly crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia. Boeing is working on software upgrades and new training procedures for the aircraft, but the FAA still has to give them the all-clear. American says it's confident the 737 MAX jets will be ready to fly in time for the Christmas travel crunch. United Airlines has already extended its cancellations until mid-December. Southwest canceled MAX flights until next year. When it comes to investing money, where are you putting your hard-earned cash? A new survey reveals real estate tops the list of long-term investments. In today's Consumer Watch, the top reasons they're investing in property. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. Hollywood has glamorized making fast money on stocks, but they're no longer America's favorite long-term investment. A new bank rate survey finds real estate is king, and real estate experts are not surprised. It's not sexy like some of these cryptocurrencies might be or when the stock market has a big run. But that's also why I love it. It is much more predictable than other asset classes, and you make money in several different ways. Stocks ranked a distant second in the survey. Cash investments like a savings account finished third, followed by gold and precious metals. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies ranked the lowest in the survey. If you're thinking about investing in property, experts say take advantage of historically low interest rates and buy a rental property and get tenants to pay off your mortgage. The easiest way that you could ever become a millionaire is to take out a million dollars in real estate debt and let somebody else pay it off for you. Experts also say real estate is a hedge against inflation. As the house goes up in value, rents also climb. But your mortgage payment stays the same. 
that creates a difference in how much you're paying versus how much you're earning. And the bigger of a difference that you get, the more money that you're able to make. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. The bank rate survey says millennials are the most drawn to real estate as a long-term investment compared to any other generation.